Let us pray. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Um, one of the things I'm getting used to um, is the machine. Um, I, I, I wouldn't have maybe chosen different songs uh, if I knew uh, this is, this is what, what happens. But this is the good thing about being new. You can make mistakes in your first service and people uh, forgive you because they will say, in any case, she is new. So next time, when I come here again, let me know those songs and those hymns uh, that you like and that you, you become vibrant when, when, when you are singing them. Uh, because for me, I like a whole body of worshiping church, all of us worshiping the way we feel God is leading us to worship. Now, at one point, I read a story about um, uh, somebody who was sharing uh, about a friend who had just taken a driving test. And those of you who knows, um, who, who maybe have taken a driving test recently, and even me who, who took maybe some times back and some of you who took even more times back, will know that that's always a very demanding test. Um, and especially when you are told to climb a hill uh, or, or to do a hill start. And this person, this woman, um, was having a lot of struggle, having to engage the right gear so that she can do a hill start. And the, the, the examiner was, of course, very worried for, for her because he watched her as she tried to do everything she can uh, to engage the second gear with no at all, uh, no success. But it seems like this examiner was a very gracious one. And so he gave her all the time that she needed uh, so that she can start. But as he, uh, as he looked and saw her stress levels rising, because this woman was quite in a state, she couldn't do it. And as he saw uh, stress levels rising, he sent to her and he sent wonderful, encouraging ones. He said, don't worry, love. They are all in the same box. All you need to do is to sort them out. And every time I think about that story and I think about that experience, I'm always reminded of Paul's uh, letters, or I mean Ephesus. Paul often in his Ephesus, he always said, we are all members of the same family. We all belong to one father. We all are endowed by one Holy Spirit. We are all being redeemed by one Lord Jesus Christ. We are all in the same box. And that is our Lord, our Savior, and our Father who is in heaven. And as I come to you this morning, in my first Sunday with you, and as I start with you as your new superintendent minister, I want to echo those ones of Paul. I want to say all of us together, we are members of one family. We all belong to one father. We are all indwelt in one 
Holy Spirit. We have all been redeemed by our Lord Jesus Christ. We are all in the same box, friends. And I would push that further and say, we all need each other. We all need each other. I am always challenged by the song or the hymn that we have just sung. Let us bring the gift that differ and in varying splendid ways sing a new church into being one in faith and one in praise. I'm always fascinated and always encouraged by those ones because for me, for this church to grow and to bring those praises to the rafter, whatever we, we, we do, it is not just a task of a few of us. It is not a task of the stewards. It's not only the task of the leadership team. It's not the task of the minister alone. If we are to win souls, if we are to reach people with the love of Christ in this Askeron, in this community, it is a business of each member. It is a business of each one of us. And if we are to grow a bigger circuit, it's not up to the people who maybe are there on the top. It is each one of us doing our bit, bringing what we have. And the question is, what is it that you bring this morning? We then that reading the leg, the ear, the nose. What is that bait that you bring so that you can complete this body which is called Ask You Church? What is that that you bring so can you put your pens or whatever you do so that we can build this place called the circuit? What is it that you bring? When we looked at uh, the gospel reading, which was read, Jesus reminds his disciples that whatever they are doing, they are doing because they have been given authority to do it. And all that we do, whether it's the singing we sing here, whether it's the serving of teas and coffees, whether it's opening this building for the community, we do with the authority that we have been given by our Lord Jesus Christ. He gives the disciples four tasks. And he says for you to be able to reach out to this place, this community, for you to be able to make disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ, he says, first of all, you have to get a vision. And in the next couple of um, weeks and months, I will be discovering what the vision of this church is. What is it that you feel God has called you to do in this place at this point for such a time like this? What are the avenues of ministry what are avenues of spiritual development? What avenues of church growth is God calling you to be uh, engaged on in this place? Jesus says, you get a vision. And he tells the disciples, therefore, go. Get a vision and therefore, go. I think the problem with most of us is when we hear those words, therefore, go, we think I have to go to Africa, or I have to go to Asia, or I have to go wherever it is. But maybe where Jesus is asking you to go this morning is maybe next door neighbor. 
And they could maybe be in your grocery store where you shop every day. Maybe where you get your newspaper every day. It's somewhere, maybe close to you, somebody you have not noticed, somebody who is just right there with you. Maybe this is where Jesus is challenging you uh, this morning to just go. And then he says, when you go, the second thing he tells the disciples, you are to make disciples. And what is Jesus is saying in this sense? Uh, you are my body. Go and make those disciples. And the disciples are made in different ways. Some of us are very good in open air. We can preach out there. Some of us are good at being. And the question is, how does your life and my life apply the faith that I profess every day? How do I live that day by day? How is that faith speaking to me about my lifestyle, what I am, and how I speak, and the way I interact with you, and the way I interact with other people? How does that affect the relationships that I have, the relationship with my neighbor, the relationship uh, with my family, the relationship with the church family, the relationship with the world. How does that faith affect, uh, affect that? How is it experienced in all that I am? Because for me, it is always very easy to say the ones, but living the ones is the most difficult way. Jesus says, go make disciples by your words and by your actions as well. And then Jesus says again, um, uh, the, the next thing that this reading says is after you have made those disciples, join them up together. Join them up together, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Who are those disciples we have made, or maybe we are yet to make, who are scattered all over? Maybe these are people who have been baptized in this place. Maybe these are people who have not come back after COVID. And maybe people who are waiting for somebody to nudge them, maybe to, to, to whisper some words, to encourage them, to make them feel, actually, you can make it. We did. You can come. Who are those disciples who are scattered? Might there be even maybe those disciples who are married in this place and we have never seen them? Who are those people that maybe Jesus is pleading with us this morning to go and reach out to? And then the other thing is, as I finish, Jesus says, it is a promise actually. He says, and surely, I am with you always to the end of the world. And surely, I am with you always to the end of the end. Jesus is with you. And he will be with you in every step of your journey. He is with you at those moments that blessings flow. And he won't be with you even those moments when you wake up in the middle of the night and maybe you start shouting in anger to him. He is with you right now in your joys and in your concerns. He is with you in all the experiences of our lives, in good times, in bad times. Jesus is with you. His hand is upon each one of us. And as we start together in this circuit, whatever you think about the circuit, 
God is with us in this journey. God is with you in this church as we journey together and as we seek to ask God, what is our mission here? Where are we and where should we be? God is with us and he says to us, and surely, as you build a community of faith in this place, surely I will be with you always to the end of the earth. Amen.